hired by Mr. Stark. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, weird. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> is that our new intro? What is that? I was no. like, hey, where is that coming from? Um, well, uh, yeah, that's what happens when you have um, a podcast already waiting to play. <laughs> When you have a trailer up in VLC, apparently. And hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Click Nation's Comic Book Chronicles. <laughs> Remembering never to do that again. I am your host, Roddy Cat, for tonight. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. But we are definitely firing on all cylinders here tonight, as we tend to do. And with me tonight is the man behind the soundboards, uh, the New York coolest character. And I did that for a reason, because, hey, you know what's coming up. Agent underscore 70. What's up, everybody? We're back to the OG. And... We're still trying to figure out his code name for G.I. Joe, but nevertheless, we have PCN underscore dirt. If we're using G.I. Joe code names, I'm pretty sure I'm Destro. Fair enough. Own it. I mean, PCN could be pretty cool nerd, although that wouldn't be my code name. I don't know. We were just going just to let that sit. Anybody want to write in? Go for it. And tonight, we have another episode of this here show. Uh, as we do every week, we are on Google Play and Apple iTunes. You can find us there. You can find um, us also on CSPN.network. That's CSPN.us. You can also go to shop.cspn.us. It's just some good merch and, and whatnot. Uh, we do not have our, our our brethren founder, the OGs, the Osiris of this thing, Tim Dad 98 But nevertheless, you can find him at T O Tim D O G G 98 on Twitter. You can find him on D Click Nation on Twitter, CB Cron on Twitter, dclicknation.com. That is D-K-L-I-Q-N-A-T-I-O-N. Uh, you can also find the rest of us at our our, our Twitter, uh, H underscore 70 on Twitter and Instagram. You can find PCN underscore dirt at PCN underscore dirt. Pop Culture Net on Twitter, both of those. PopCultureNetwork.com. And his uh, other comic sites uh, this, under the PSN, PCN name. I need comics.com. What? Uh, yeah, I know. I know. All over the place. You know. <laughs> this is why you get paid the big bucks, right? <laughs> right. Not like I've been doing this every week uh, for the past while. Anywho, as we tend to do every week, we start off with the books of the week. And we're going to start off with um, a little known book called Batman Wang. I mean, oh, no! <laughs> Batman Damned. That's number one. So take it away, fellas, because I didn't read this. All right. So uh, PCN underscore Dirt mentioned something that I had neglected to remember, which is that uh, Lee Bermejo and uh, and uh, was it Brian Azzarello? Yep. Had done a previous uh, graphic novel set in a slightly alternate uh, DC uh, universe uh, entitled uh, The Joker or Joker. Uh, it's just Joker, no the Joker, right? And now we have what appears to be the second installment in that particular corner of the DC multiverse. It's called Batman Damned, and uh, it's a pretty interesting take on uh, like a hyper real realistic Batman. 
Yeah, well, it's um, part of the what they're calling DC Black right. Black Label, Black Label, right. uh, like, like your top shelf liquor, right? And um, so it's a very adult oriented, uh, mature reader focused, which I thought that was what Vertigo was supposed to be, but uh, I, I'm I'm guessing that Vertigo won't won't use mainstream DC heroes. That's what it was. And right. that was kind of the whole point of Vertigo in the first place was that they were using the forgotten DC heroes and making mature storylines. Right. Them. And then they just stopped. So, uh, so yeah, so as part of black label, uh, this is a more, you can say mature take, I guess, if you want to. Um, it's one of those books that tries really hard to be philosophical. Mm -hmm. tries really hard to, to just dig deep somewhere and it kind of does okay in some places and it kind of falls on its face in a couple other places mm -hmm. um it's it's one of those that it just it just tries too hard it's like uh it's like a high school kid trying to write a one-man play about his depression and it's one of those things where you're just like mm, you know it's like I, I see where you're coming from but you're a little cringy in spots and yeah. that's that's what this story was for me. Like it was, it was decent. Um, so basically, the Joker ends up dead. Batman has memory loss. He has no idea what happened, uh, and he thinks he may be somehow involved. And of course, John Constantine shows up uh, just to play with him. Dead Man is there because why not? Right. And uh, so yeah, so Batman's trying to solve the mystery of whether or not he's the one who actually killed Joker. Right. So um, I didn't know you were going to do all that. So. <laughs> Well, I'm not giving away. Oh, but I mean, ultimately, you right. should know that much from the solicits, at least. Maybe not Dead Man, but All right. So ultimately, I was very confused because I did not understand that this was set in an alternate timeline. Um, I kind of interpreted this as being, um, or you know, at least appearing to be part of the mainstream DCU, and then um, you know, seeing all these characters jump in, but then as Time went on, and you know, various uh, DC characters decided to make appearances. I was very, you know, it, it, that just threw me for a loop. So I definitely had, I, I definitely appreciate knowing for certain that this is set in a strictly separate uh, DC continuity. Yeah, well, it's it's I mean, trying to to do the same idea as if you think of like the films, like uh, Dark Knight rises and you know batman begins and all of that like those are that's one person's idea of how to tell a batman story and it stands alone and it's not really part of the multiverse like it can be if someone wants to throw an easter egg when someone's popping in and out of universes maybe they'll pop in and see the joker and pop out you know something like that but it's not really meant to be part of just the normal you know what you think of as the DC universe. It's just someone's own artistic take on what to do with the characters. And that's something that DC does do from time to time, where they throw in some of these graphic novels or miniseries where they just they don't really fit anywhere. They're just letting a writer and artist go nuts with the characters, just you know, to do something different. Right. Yeah, we used to call them White Elsewhere. Knight. Yeah, like that White Knight series from um, from early this year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I thought, well, I was under the impression that Black Label was supposed to be the place where they were going to do one more mature stuff, and two, most of the stuff was going to be, uh, which we do know that there's a Joker series that's going to be in the universe. But rather, I was under the impression that it was mostly not like it was mostly Elseworlds stuff. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if there's any set rules like specifically like you can't have a tie into continuity or you can or whatever right. but like in this particular story at least it's their own you know take on what happened and they haven't officially said that it ties in with the uh joker um graphic novel that they did but if you read this you can see especially with the artwork it's the same commissioner gordon it's the same batman with the same suit in both stories it's the same joker um, you know, with his scars going up the face in the same way. So, I, if it's if it's not officially spoken of as a follow up to this or set in the same universe, they're definitely trying to imply that. Okay. Cool. And apparently, there, as you know, since we've already alluded to it, guess what? There's like four separate instances of of, of uh, Bruce Bruce's wedding. <laughs> 
Uh, uh, that wing! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. So, okay, so the funny thing is, I, I got my copy on Tuesday night. We got the official review copies uh, earlier in the week. Uh, and, and Wang, it was all full of Wang. Uh, and I read mine. I didn't even notice. Like, <laughs> apparently, I'm just not uh, geared to, to, to scan for that. But um, so I read the whole thing. Didn't even occur to me. And then I got online the next day, and everybody's like, like oh, my gosh, take a look. At you can see it. It's right there. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So I actually I pulled up the Comixology copy. Because um, I, I often buy digital and print at the same time because I'm just an idiot. And um, on Comixology, there's, it's not there. There's no way. And so I was like, well, that's I, I don't see what they're seeing here. So I went back and checked the print copy. And sure enough, it's in the print copy. So first prints have it. Uh, the review copies that they sent out, which were probably all generated sometime last week, all have it. Um, but then the actual one submitted to Comixology doesn't have it in there so at some point somebody said hey maybe this isn't a good idea and they've censored it out and I, I guess DC actually released a statement saying that going forward it will be wiped out uh, from any future reprinting in fact yeah so it's because uh, I just pulled up an article I was gonna put it in the news but I still forgot but since hey, we're talking about it now there are still 115,000 print copies out there that do show that do somewhat show explains privates according to this uh, article and but yeah they do plan on going forward just like um oh and the panel was a question was always censored on digital comics according to this uh mm -hmm. yeah so apparently that was that was intentional digitally which is still kind of weird so do we start calling them bruce wang oh no it is well so yeah there we go so that that whole hubbub is the is out there <laughs> fully swinging um but anyway back to the comic itself the artwork is beautiful um you know it is fully painted it looks super nice um just the story the story i think it, it just tries too hard to be too deep maybe i shouldn't use those words uh <laughs> but <laughs> No pun intended, um, and and it just kind of it feels it feels like it forces itself on you too much. Oh, I shouldn't have said that either. Uh, I can't. Somebody stop me. Somebody else jump in. Keep digging this hole. All right. Um, so wait, do, do we know? Is this a one shot or is it like? No, no, no. This is um, this is a mini series. Okay. Although I'm not sure how many it is. Yeah, I don't. Remember saying any any word on that? And it's and it's oversized. So uh, that's one thing people were asking on on the Comicsology copies when they were buying it because it's in almost like a square shape. Um, here's this. Here's Justice League uh, from this week, and you can see that there's mm -hmm. a size difference. It's definitely a much bigger right. It's uh, book than your standard comic. It's one of those things that collectors moan and groan about. Yeah, I was just gonna say because it doesn't fit in the box. Yeah, that's destined to be on a trade shelf. I was gonna make mention of being a size queen, uh, uh, about somebody being a size queen, but we <laughs> we may probably just need to to um to keep moving on. <laughs> well, and it is it is on a on a thicker uh. Uh, stock of paper, you know, so it is it is it is bigger. It's thicker. It's harder than your regular comic Get it all out <laughs> Get them all out there. And if you have a first print, it's bigger longer and uncut But for those who prefer girth um All right, another book. Let's go. Just let us let us let us move. <laughs> I got the vapors hold on uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Um, did, 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 did anybody want to throw something out? Uh, no. Okay. Well, that was the big newsworthy one, but uh, um, which was yeah. Um, I think. Well, we all read Mister Miracle, so let's go ahead and do that one. Yeah, I was really confused at first because this isn't the final issue. No, 
And yet, as it's going along, it's like, okay, well, this is the final confrontation. So somehow we're getting the final confrontation and not the final issue. How is this going to work? And so I, at first, I'm, my mind is thinking maybe issue 12 is going to be some sort of epilogue, you know, some wrap up, maybe 10 years in the future or, or, or 30 years in the future or a thousand years in the future or something, you know, just kind of weird to, to throw in there. Um, but you find out that even though it seems like this should be the final confrontation, it's not what it seems. Uh, yeah. And there's something else going on here, right? Within which, a original character, that's the that's the that's the trip. That uh, yeah. not just between the the characters that you expect the ending to be between, but there's an additional character that intervenes at the end and shows his face, and uh, as as this particular character is want to do. And uh, you know, we 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 see we'll see what happens in the final issue of the series. So, yeah, it, it looks like those that last page and a half seem to be going somewhere where there's an answer to right. what's going on here. Uh, we just don't know how that's going to play out. And I don't know that much about this character in the first place, even though you know, well, mostly any of the new guards in the first place. But regardless, so I don't know what their play is in this. But I guess that's what the next issue is for. But, yeah, um, and well, the the big newsworthy thing on this one, there's no Wang in this one, but there's a veggie tray. Exactly. <laughs> and 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 Dark Side actually eats some of it. And I was really confused because the first line of dialogue after Dark Side starts eating this veggie tray, and he's like dipping it in the ranch dip, and he's trying it, and Desad goes, "You're trying to kill him," and I'm like. He's trying to kill Darkseid with a veggie tray? Like, do carrots kill Darkseid? Like, is he that evil that something nice and nutritious may actually, like, destroy him? Like, I'm trying to figure, oh, oh, but they're talking about something completely different. He's just opening up the conversation, right. not actually referring to the entire page of Darkseid picking up little baby carrots and dipping it in the ranch and eating it. Oh, oh look, you know, I was so well rendered. <laughs> right. I, 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 personally, I just couldn't, I couldn't take my eyes off it for a couple of minutes. I, I had to laugh at that one because I was like, okay, just just the picture of dark side just sitting there just, just munching on the veggie tray was like, all right, this is, this is good stuff That's here. That's visual storytelling people. Well, and plus, you know, you you know that dark side is bigger than your average character. You know, he's a he's a tall, menacing figure, but you don't really, you know, think about it that much because they always just start clobbering each other or whatever. Uh, and they actually draw his like giant hands picking up this tiny little baby carrot and like dipping it in the thing and uh, trying to chew on it, you know, did like this entire, and it's, it's an entire page of these panels. And it's like, that's the type of thing. I almost want to put that on a t-shirt. Like I want that page of him dipping in the veggie tray on a shirt. I think that would be an awesome shirt. I think the other one that needs to probably needs to be put on a shirt was the baby with dark side with his nose. Oh yeah, well okay. Maybe we can do a collage of some of these different things. Yeah, but that one because that right there because because when because yeah those whole there's a part with the where the um um Scott and Barter's baby is they're taking but Scott and Bar Barter's baby that we don't have to get into all of that but is grabbing uh dark side's nose and saying na 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 or <laughs> you know, nah, nah. So I was thinking it was like wait is he calling the dark side's nose a banana like they were saying it's like no that's just what he says says nose. Like no, he's calling dark side's nose a banana. I'm thinking, but we don't know. There, there's lots of clever little things that that they've come up with in this series. Not only in the the writing and the dialogue, but also in the artwork. This is another one of those books that it, it galvanizes a lot of readers because there are some people that just don't get it, um, and it's too. I don't want to say it's too high concept, but it's just too different from a standard comic for them to really. You mean you know, get yeah, yeah, and, and and a lot of people don't like that they've gone with the that that Keith Giffen uh, old school format where it's it's a nine panel page or it's a full page, right? You know, or maybe even a two page spread, but it's always the nine panel page nine panels on a page if it's being broken down every single time, regardless. And so a lot of people, I, I've talked, I've actually talked to people that just hate it. They just really? they hate it. They don't want to read it. They don't like it. They they just think it's they think it's lazy. The, the hard part about this story is that it does involve the new gods where, the, you know, we, we have the, the kind of uh, headliner characters that we know as, you know, from different forms of media like uh, the Justice League cartoon, for example. And 
we are also dealing with characters you know that are a little bit more further afield in the in the world of the new gods and i think that that definitely throws some people but i appreciate this i definitely appreciate this i am not that familiar with the new gods and their mythos i i appreciate the nods to comic book history in general because we you see what they name the baby right mhm and you know who it's named after and right oil it so you have to read it to figure that one out but yeah it's a very clever book it's very well done i love it uh and it it would be my click of the week but then there's something else that happened in another book this week uh, so well i like this issue a lot it's definitely a candidate for click of the week for me as well all right Uh, so let us move on to um... <laughs> oh hey agent 70 you want to talk about edge of spider get a number three sure this is actually a very surprisingly entertaining book so we are at the third issue of the lead up to the spider get an event so much like with um spider verse marvel is putting out uh, a series of uh not quite standalone stories but introductory stories for some of the spider verse characters that are going to be new uh or at least may be uh, less well established than some of the other characters you'll see during the event one of the uh, primary characters to come out of these edge of books from Spider-Verse was Spider-Gwen. In this issue, it's Spider-Ben and Petey, and it's hysterical. This was so well done. This is an alternate universe where, uh, much like Bruce Banner and Jennifer Walters, without spoiling everything, much like Bruce, ba uh, uh, Bruce Banner and Jennifer Walters kind of uh, have their origin stories intertwined, that's where a lot of this comes in. And it's so very fun. It's something that, you know, other than a couple of really small changes, you know, actually made some sense. You know, you could see this happening in the mainstream uh, uh, Marvel reality. This is not the biggest stretch of a what if. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I I thought this was was a uh, pretty cute in spots and also potentially dark. But yeah, the the, the young PD and, and old uh, old Ben as um a spider, well not spider coupling, a a spider duo. Yeah, and Batman and Robin style almost well, was product was pretty good. And you have uh Ben kind of narrating the whole thing during the you know going through the process, and it was like. Cool. You even get um, Craven's Last Hunt in here. Was was like, huh? All right. And it was I, well adapted to this little yeah. story. Yeah. And, and I like um, PD's um, PD's the description of it. It's like, yeah, you know, I, I was somewhere and there was poetry, and I fought a rat. <laughs> <laughs> Did it do the drugs on me? Yeah. yeah. So exactly. it, it was very very entertaining. Yeah, As you said, there is a hint that this. Um, may hold a dark side in terms of story, in, in terms of where the story goes, where there is some untold things that uh, may be explored later on. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, um, but yeah, I actually enjoyed that. I had no intentions of actually picking this up and reading, but I was kind of seeing things about it on the um, around. I was like, you know what? I'll check this out. Spider Verse, Spider Verse did me right with uh with uh Spider Gwen, so why not? And actually, it was the cover that did it. Realistically, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean the main cover, not the not the alternate cover? Okay, right. So I was like, all right, let me go check out this. So, but yeah, but that was pretty cool, and I'm I'm glad I read that. I don't know if I'm going to go back and do Edge of uh, Spider Geddon, but eh. this Let's one was reading. Yeah, but this one definitely was was worth it. Um, I'm going to throw out Doctor Strange number five because I really, really, really like this book. That was fun. It, it was pretty good. Now, now, the only issue I had with it, which was what we'll get into in a second. So, what we find here is uh, Doctor Strange kind of going back to basics. Um, 
and getting some Infinity Ward slash his own origin time mixing together because apparently he's uh, apprenticing, he's apprenticed to be a magical blacksmith. Right. Um, and it kind of takes it back to his, you know, his original origins. He, we even see all the cuts and scars in his, in, with, in, on his hands and whatnot, but it kind of just kind of plays those lines of like, well, he's, you know, he's learning how to do this just like he's done, you know, just like he did when he, when he, uh, learned magic in the first place and, you know, and going back to when he, you know, uh, studied as a doctor and talked about his, that kind of stuff. And he come out on the other side with it, with a, a bunch, a new power set, basically. And a new costume, right? Um, which was cool. Now I've read an article that. Well, and, and I guess I see where the article comes from, because because the 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 blacksmith he's apprenticing uh, under is a is an Asgardian elf or excuse me, dwarf. So again, you know, there's also you could say there's also shades of Infinity War there, right? In the, um, but when this article mentions something like, well, he's got a new, you know. As as Guardian Power upgrade, and I I started thinking back to the last volume, where he actually did tap from Yggdrasil, mm-hmm. and I'm sitting here like, well, wait, shouldn't he already have that? But this this issue doesn't necessarily go into that part. He's just we just see him banging away on some new magical hours. He's got a new power set because of it, and he's making his own way and you know, making his own magic, making his own magics. Right. If you recall. The beginning of this volume basically took all that all those as guardian powers away again where the end of aaron's doctor strange run had him recharging with as guardian magic wade's run all of a sudden deep powered doctor strange basically to the point where he had to you know what was the base that the, the premise of the story is that he had to leave earth to find magic in other places Right, and they bring up in this issue the fact that he seemingly for, had forgotten of it and he wasn't sure what caused that, and he's and that's a mystery for another time, which right. apparently we're going to come up to because at the end of this issue we find out there is we find himself heading back to Earth. Right, and there's and, a pretty interesting cliffhanger. Yes, because that like, went through us all, and it deserves this. Right, because without giving it away, the, the the past few issues, or at least the past what two or three issues, they've they've been hinting at something, especially bringing back um, Bats, the the ghost dog, right, back into the picture, who was seemingly talking to someone in the shadows, and we find out who that person is, and we're gonna definitely find out what's going on with that business next issue, seemingly. So, again, and. You know, Doctor Strange was kind of badass in this issue, also because he kind of, you know, uh, who went off to save save his friend and save Earth at the same time, and uh, you know, utilizes his power set. It's almost like an episode of Power Rangers when they get a new Zord, which I don't know why I even brought that brought up, but you know, it's like they're always badass when they get their new thing when they when they get their new toys, and then after that, it's like, well, it goes back to being, you know, <laughs> baseline. So. But yeah, this was a great issue. Um, it was weird. The, the when he was blacksmith one time, I want to bring it up. It looks like he had night masks. Um, I mean, night hawk's mask. Or at least the way it looked. So I was like, wait, where, where where'd that come from? But it wasn't the case. That said, this was a potential click of the week for me. And oh, yeah, the, the the welding mask. Yeah. So I was like, wait a minute, where did that come from? But it, it looks that looks weird. That's definitely not like a. Okay. Right. And that's what I was thinking that. So I was like, mm, but like I said, you kind of, and it's probably nothing, nothing from it. It was just, just happens to be a mask. Sometimes a mask is a mask. Alrighty. But, um, there is that. So, and, um, who wants to bring up something else? Maybe Justice League, Dirk? We can talk about Justice League. Or did you have another one you wanted to do? No, no, Justice League is fine. Uh, Justice League, uh, so Starman has made his reappearance in the DC universe, except it's not the Starman that most people are probably thinking about. Uh, most people are probably expecting the one from the, was it a Vertigo series or was it just a regular DC series? It, it, the James Robinson uh, run. I say yes. Ran from uh, early 2000s to late 2000s. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, that's the one most people are thinking. Jack Ryder, was that his name? 
anyway, uh, the the guy that wore the leather jacket right. and had the sunglasses, Starman, not that guy. Jack Knight. That was his name. Okay, I never, I didn't ever actually read that. Thank one, you, so. Google. <laughs> but uh, no, this is this is the the other Starman that came in the late '80s. The, the one that I actually bought as a kid growing up had the giant star on his chest. Got his powers from uh, a satellite that was trying to harness this radiation from space and then shoot it back down uh, to Earth, where it would be collected. And instead, their their satellite went a little wonky, and it shot this kid out in the desert, and he got these uh, powers and became the Starman. And mm-hmm. I actually I love that series. Uh, I, I, I in fact I've started rebuying the back issues every time I go to the comic shops that always have like the ten for a dollar, and I'm digging through all their their stuff from the 80s and 90s. Uh, I've been buying a bunch of uh, Starman again. So I'm actually excited that the character's back because I love the character. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, if, if there's going to be anything more for him or, you know, if he's just there for the storyline, whatever. But we got the the Batman Who Laughs returning now in the pages of Justice League. He returned at the end of the last issue, uh, just as Starman did. And unfortunately, he's returning to be another you know, to to be a big character again in the DC universe, and I just, I just don't care for the character. The it's a Joker Batman hybrid that came out of the Dark Knight's Metal miniseries, right? Um, and it's one of the, everybody freaked out when they saw him, and everybody bought all the copies, and every time he's made an appearance, people buy all the copies, and fine, you know, whatever. But somehow, somehow he knows the the Batman who laughs knows about some alien god queen uh who every time they speak of her the universe shudders in fear um and she was the one that the source wall was trying to keep in at the center of the universe and somehow nobody in the world has ever heard of her except for this batman from an alternate universe in the dark dimension the the minus five multiverse or whatever it is so it's one of these and with a terrible name what was it per, perpetua yeah i read her name i just didn't put it on my list and so like when i first read it i, I read it as petunia oh no and i was like petunia like, like petunia is the name of the character that instills fear in all of creation don't you say oh. that about my sweet aunt petunia <laughs> oh, i'm your girlfriend but sure yeah I'll go either way with that but, you know, uh, this story, I, I'm just not a fan of this arc a whole lot. You know, when it started out, I thought, great, it's going to be, like, big, bold, and dynamic. And instead we get stuff where they're like, Flash, you got to tap into the still force, and you got to hold still. And he's like, I don't know how to do that. And, and, and so then he has to, and he does because of some energy that he's got to stop from somewhere because if the energy comes through, then something's going to happen. And it's like, what? Like, so much of the story just feels like they just give you, like, the, the, the barest minimum of there's a threat, you got to stop it, and then we get two and a half issues of everybody, we got to stop this thing, we got to fight real hard. I and just then, think that there's way too much going on in this story where we have these interludes and these side missions because – not only do you have the Justice League, you also have the Legion of Doom, and Snyder has to give shine to all of these characters. Right. And there's a, a a side mission where I just got very confused, and I think it's spoiler alert. <laughs> Cheetah and Black Manta taking out DC's Poseidon, mm-hmm. and I was I was very much in shock, thinking the heck is poseidon doing you know uh living living li- uh, uh 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 living an episode of deadliest catch is that something that dc loves like you know they put superman in deadliest catch and man of steel so it's a good show i mean i know, you know i mean I just, there are worse reality shows you could be a part of but seriously, that is true but I, mean, just, I, I guess my my biggest problem is that you have this this new evil character that we're finding out about who has never been mentioned before never appeared in the background of anything before was never alluded to before but just suddenly somehow 
oh, there's this great evil out there, and this is what it's called, and now it's something bigger and better than anything you faced before, but no one's ever heard of it except for this guy from this alternate dimension. And then, like, with the character you just spoke of and the side mission, uh, you know, it's just, it's like, hey, there's this guy, and you're all kind of familiar with him, but he's been hiding out on Earth. And how do we know he's been hiding out on Earth? Because they told us right now right. when the bad guys go to do something with him. It's not like this is a character they've been talking about. They've been trying to find him. Where is he? He must be hiding out somewhere. Where is he hiding? And they find him, and the villains take care of him. It's just like, oh, hey, by the way, here's this whole other story mm -hmm. that apparently has been going on that you've never heard about until right now. Right, and it's and somewhat important. Right, and, and we're just going to jump right in here and apparently end it, um, which I'm guessing it's probably not really, but still. All right. Um, it's just kind of one of those, like I said, it, it, this is another one of those stories that I think just tries too hard to be too epic. And too big, yes. Yeah, and it's just, at the end of the day, you're just kind of walking out there kind of empty. It's like watching a big blockbuster action movie where it's like, yeah, you get explosions and you're getting, you know, the big meaty punches and the knockdown drag out fights, but the story just really isn't there to, to hold it up. So, yeah, I'm... Although I will say I still like this Justice League better than the Hitches run on Justice League. That's not that hard. But yeah, I'm saying you're comparing like a, a two to a five. So right. <laughs> okay. Right. All right. Moving on. President Bartlett. What's next? Uh, I think since we all read it, a Mortal Hulk maybe. Uh, sure. Sure. So I see. PCN underscore dirt's note that this is the talky talky issue. Um, I I don't necessarily think that that's what the what, what the case is here. I think this is Ewing setting up something that we had all foreseen, which is all of the ramifications of the Langowski uh, one, one one issue story, which we thought might be a one and done, but obviously it's not. And two. We see what happens now that uh, the Hulk has basically emerged onto uh, the newly reformed Avengers radar. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what happens. Nothing happens. A lot of people have conversations. Hmm. A lot of people walk into rooms and make declarations. Well, that's true, but we do find out some things from those, some, some of those conversations. Back. Yeah, but, but we could have found out a lot of that stuff in six pages instead of 20. Yeah, that's probably true. We also know that there are some bad decisions afoot, as they as they're want to do. And, and I was also a little confused with um, the Avengers when they show up, because I can see that it's supposed to be this the, the new team, but the characters don't all match up to what I remember reading in the not the last issue of Avengers because it was set a million years ago, but the the issue before that of who was all on the team and who wasn't on the team. Uh, oh, that, that would be this issue. The, yeah, they're set up in this week's issue. Ah, okay, all right. Which so. we will probably get to in a minute, but yeah. Okay, but yeah, still, I mean, when it got done, I was like, okay, well, I mean, that's all right, but that that was still, you know, kind of one of those filler issues where. You know, you didn't, n nothing really happened except for we had to move this guy here and this guy over here and, and move this piece here and bring in this guy so we could move her up in here to get in the way here so that we could have this confrontation here, you know, and then you have to wait for the next issue to actually get the confrontation, um, you know, that it was building up to, so... We just need to you get one of those pin boards with the pins and the and the and the uh, the red yarn to yes, the yarn, yeah, just, just just put all that together. Which luckily is this story so far hasn't been that bad, but yeah, this issue kind of could you could see where it could lean towards that. Um, but yeah, like yeah, this. I mean, I still like it. I mean, overall, I still like the series. Don't get me wrong, and I'm still right. buying it. You know, uh, I have no plans on dropping this from my pull list at, the, at this time. But, uh, you know, I still, this issue compared to the five that have come before, I think this is the weakest out of the five. Right. And it's because it's a setup for what's going to happen right. next. Transition to the superhero side. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, we see 
the, the players come into into the fold, or at least most of the players that we know are coming to the fold all together. And right. I guess the Avengers in the mix too for whatever issue or two they're going to scrap it out. And uh, but yeah, so there's that. And I guess so well, being that case, let's go ahead and talk about Avengers number eight since we're here. Yeah, I don't think PCN underscore Dirt read this. Nope, I I gave up on the book. Okay, yeah. I think you should jump on. Because this is a good place to jump on because Ed McGinnis is not doing the art. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, granted, that helps. It helps immensely because... Hang on. Let me, let, let's, let, let me see if I can get him on back on board with this. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be the case, but so you stayed on board until the, um, until the, the, the fiery woolly mammoths. Great. How about this? The, the Avengers move into a dead c- celestial in the, at, the, um, at the North Pole. Do they meet Santa at the North Pole? <laughs> no. Not okay, I'm not. I'm not in. Okay. It's pretty cool. <laughs> like in all ser- in all seriousness, all I had to do was open this to the not the first page, but the second and th- and, and 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 third pages, and just everything moving forward. Dave Marquez is on this book doing art for I I think at least this arc. And it is so much easier to read this book with good art attached to Jason Aaron's script. <laughs> Everything flows so much better. There's so much more uh, ease in reading and following action and understanding what in the hell is going on. There is a little bit of, again, this is a bit of a setup issue as mm-hmm. the... Uh, as the issues that involve election of chairpersons tend to be. Yes. This, there is that we get and we also get the the congealed um roster. Right. Fine. So anyone who is familiar with the rhythm and flow of Avengers stories, whenever this part of the overall story happens where they elect a chairperson and basically assemble for the first time as a new group. A lot of this is, uh, a lot of what happens in this issue, a lot of the setup in this issue, a lot of the changes in the status quo in the issue are all just variations on a common theme. So it's, it definitely read very, it, it, I appreciated reading this because it's uh, a different take on the updates of the status quo, but at the same time, there are very subtle differences in how they're proceeding, such as the person who they elect as chairperson. Right. It was so that part was slightly a bummer because usually there's a little bit more ceremony, or at least classically, there's a little bit more cer- ceremony behind the, the the picking of the chair. But once they did this, which I'm not mad at the pick because you know, sure, I'm also, I that's... laughed. I laughed just before that no. where. Uh, Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers says, I won't be a backup dancer for the big three. I laughed at that. I thought that was a great line. Actually, I think I laughed, I laughed at that. I also laughed at the 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 um her interaction with Tony, which okay. that's that's basically kind of worth the read right there at when when they talked about that, because that was kind of a thing that was still kind of hanging in the air for from from Civil War Two. Yeah. Um, but also, but like, but like I said, the thing with the naming of the chair, the, the chair was seeming unceremonious. It's like, as soon as that happened, it was like, well, business as usual. And ding, it just kind of flew through that. Uh, also, I guess in this, we get, uh, I guess going back to Hulk, uh, in the lineup, we get to find out, um, about she holds power grade, which that one kind of messed with me for a second. Also, because I could have sworn a lot of that kind of came out, or a lot of that was before uh, tangling with the Celestials, with her, you know, with her, um, with her, the change of her her power update, I guess, you know, her her upgrade or, or and mental capacity, all that stuff. It was a, it, I think it's part of the transition from the gray phase to where she is now, right? And that involved no, that was. Uh, further explored in her solo book for you know for 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 the extent that it was still around right but that's what i'm saying and that's like well but but they just kind of or at least let me rephrase that it read like they just says oh no no this happened because of the celestials when like i said which i get to see part of it because of you know because of the thing they did last issue or issue before last 
I could see that being a part of it. But it's like, well, like this other stuff was in her solo, so I'm not sure how how it could just be played into that. Nevertheless, yeah, I was gonna say just to wrap my recommendation to PCN underscore dirt on this, I think this is the issue to pick up. Hmm. I think it's worth reading this to see if the the new direction that they're going with this team is worth you picking up. As I said earlier, the we see what happens. Yeah, Loki gets taken care of. Exactly. All, 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 all I have to say about this is that the art made this so much more enjoyable. Hmm. Oh, the other only other thing that was kind of weird to me was that when uh, Cap and and Robbie was talking, that part was kind of weird because it was like. Because Robbie asked Cap if he was the only one still in high school. Uh, or no, he was if he was the strongest. And I think those are, uh, and those are talking about what's is he the only one that's been in high, uh, high school. I'm like, well, what about Kamala and Miles and Nova? Because all of them. Well, were, no, I think he's talking about on the current roster. I well, I know, but but it seemed, but that made it seem like ever is what he was asking. Right. Um, no. or at least I, how it how it read to me, and I'm like, well, it is, no, I it thought about it. Steve wasn't on the team when they were on the team either. Right? No, it says who's still in high school. Right. Oh, but uh, but, they, still, but that's still the yeah, but that other characters have all struck out on their own to become champions. So yeah, I know. But like I said, you know, they were still in high school and they were still Avengers, and oh. that was that's how that's kind of how I read it. And but you know, you can take it a couple different ways. That's a, that was just, that was just a, a nit. No, wasn't it? No, wasn't a big one. It was just like that seemed kind of strange. But then, like I said, I could, I just played it off like, well, Steve wasn't around when they were when they were on the team anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, this was I thought this was a pretty good issue with with what happened and going forward, we'll see what happens because you know moving into a giant celestial probably is not as good as good as uh, any of their other residential choices either. But we'll see how this works out. It's very Fortress of Solitude. Yeah, kind of. You know, with a little mix of X Factor moving into uh, uh, the celestial ship that Apocalypse stole. All right. Which That's a not... shout out to old school X Factor. Yeah. All right. Which, yeah, I totally forgot about that. So, um, yeah, that was a good run. Anyway, so yeah, we'll move on from that. Dirt, you got anything? Yep. What you got? Oh, I read stuff. Go, 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 go. We're, uh, we're short on time before we run into rapid fires. So. All right. Return of Wolverine number one. Ooh. I was um, surprisingly entertained by this issue. I thought the story was okay. Um, I mean, just overall, the the I guess part of it is I haven't really been following any of the other, like the hunt for Wolverine stuff and all of the whatevers that have been going on. Right. So when I got to this, I, I thought there would be like, some recap stuff. This is what's been going on the past couple months in the Marvel universe. They were doing all those things for a while where it was like, Wolverine's going to pop up on the last page of, you know, these books, make sure you don't miss it. And it was just like him sitting at a campfire, or, you know, whatever, like, right. I don't know. It, it just, so I was like, okay, how does all this stuff pay off? And really it's like, he wakes up, he has amnesia. There's a bunch of dead bodies and the story just moves from there. Right. So, okay, I guess we're just wiping the slate clean and moving forward. Right. Um, so I don't know. I just I felt a little let down by it because it didn't feel like, hey, this is a great thing. New readers, jump on, grab this. Um, well, but, I think, oh, go ahead. No, I was about to say I wanted to, I wanted to address that. I think that this is somewhat new reader friendly because we're not dealing with him being at a campfire and looking to deliver flowers to, I forget which character, um, you know, uh, whose book he appeared in. I, I'm trying to remember what, what, what book that was where he comes to the hospital with flowers. Right. And, uh, I appreciated that we are literally going to when he wakes up. So this might be just a bit far back in terms of uh, those crossovers. You know, we may be going back in time somewhat. Uh, that may be possible as well. Yeah, because you don't have anything really else going on in this book that gives you a sense of how recent or old it is. Right. Um, I mean, I guess we do see the claws glow at one point. So we have to assume this is after his resurrection. It's not a flashback to 20 years ago or something. Right. So anyway, um, but so, I mean, the story just in general, I thought was okay, but I didn't think it was really that great. 
Mm -hmm. But the artwork, the artwork was, I think it's Steve McNiven. Yeah. And he is doing his best He's Barry channeling. Windsor Smith. Yes. He is channeling Barry Windsor Smith. And it is phenomenal. Yeah. Like it is just fantastic. I don't think he quite has the level of detail that Barry Windsor Smith always did, but he's got the look down. Like he's got the line work down. He's got the facials down, uh, the fabrics and textures. I mean, it looks uh, facial hair. Like it looks like the way Barry Windsor Smith drew all that stuff. Like you could take the the Marvel Comics presents Weapon X, and and put it next to this, and yeah, it looks like they belong together. I definitely second that. That was definitely a selling point. I mean, yeah. that was as much as the story was just kind of like, meh, I still wanted to turn the page and just see that beautiful artwork just dripping off of there. Right. Uh, even down to the blood spatter and the blood, you know, uh, uh, dripping effects. That mm -hmm. was all straight out of Barry Windsor Smith's book. Th this may be the one time that an artist does like an obvious swipe through the entire book and you're just like, okay, I get it. It's cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, we let this one go, you know. It's more of an homage than a swipe because it's definitely his drawings. He's not aping any particular uh, drawings, except for maybe that last page where it definitely feels like I've seen that before right. on a Barry Windsor Smith page. But, but yeah, it, that that is beautiful artwork. And that, that yeah, it's homaging and aping, yeah. So that alone is going to bring me back for the next issue. Cool. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, Batman 55? Yes. Read that too. Okay, so this was one of those, uh, you, you know, uh, Batman Nightwing running around, uh, Nightwing's cracking the jokes. Right. Remember that this is still the in the aftermath of being jilted at the altar. Right. So uh, trying to, you know, bring some smiles back, bring some levity. But the story takes this little side turn, and you see this mysterious guy arrive in town. And as soon as this guy arrives, I was like, oh, I, okay, I see what's going to happen here. Like, it, it, to me, it just kind of telegraphed the whole thing. Like, oh, so we, we have Nightwing is so happy and so light and so much joy. And Batman is so dark and brooding. And, and Nightwing starting to crack through the shell. And then this guy makes his move. And it's like, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I thought that was a little weak uh, in the way that was structured. But I love the interaction between the characters. Sure. Um, the way that, that Dick Grayson was acting around Bruce just really harkened back to you know, a lot of the stuff that we've seen with the whole Bat family, uh, you know, Robin is always the light and the joy and the happiness that, that keeps Batman from going over that edge. And uh, especially because of everything that's been happening, you know, lately with the uh, wedding and all that, that you, you need someone there, you know, to, to keep him from totally snapping. And it seems to work actually in a couple spots until the end. Right. Um, so now the bell real quick. Or, and, and, and you can go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I, well, I, I'm not, I'm not going to give away exactly what happens, mm -hmm. but what happens is, is, is kind of a, a common trope in comics that you get an ending like we got in this book, and you think, oh, my gosh, the worst thing possible. And then the next issue, it's it's not that bad. It just looked bad in that moment, but it's really not bad at all. It's it's no big deal. And, and they get up and walk away and whatever. But with this being a Tom King book, that very well could be a really bad thing that happens at the end of this book. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be something that has, and it may only stick in Batman. It may not, you know, run over to Nightwing because DC editorial allows people to go a little nuts sometimes. But you know, this very well could be something that has months and months of ramifications for uh, the character, and it and Batman. Nightwing was supposed to save him and keep him from going over the edge. This could be the thing that just pushes him right over the edge, uh, hard and fast. So, right. so uh, I go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I, I, I'll let you finish. Well, so I was just going to say, I, I, I went into it. I, I enjoyed the interplay. That guy appears, and it immediately kind of brought me down a little bit. And we got to the ending, and I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then I start thinking about it a little more okay, there may actually be something more going on with this story. You know, it, it seemed a little too easy and a little too basic the way he threw it in there. But when I think about what possibly could be the long-term mm -hmm. ramifications of the story, then I liked it a whole lot more. Right. Mm -hmm. So do I you think... have suspicions as to who this character is? I did automatically. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
because of the one arm. Bell. Right. I rang the spoiler bell specifically to address this particular uh, issue. He's the one arm man from The Fugitive. Ha! He killed Dr. Richard Kimball's wife. We believe you, Dr. Kimball. I don't care. Right. <laughs> I want to watch that again now that we're talking about it. All right. Certainly. I watch that all the time whenever it comes on. It doesn't matter what, what at what point of the movie it is. <laughs> all right. So but, anyway. Um, well, what I was going to say is I, I think it going back to your point about what happens at because I, I, while I haven't read this book, I kind of know some things that might be happening with Nightwing and it's partially not as bad as it seems. But I'm thinking, like, are we going to have like Dark Knight? Dark Nightwing now, because of what happens from what I've read. So. Well, and yeah, and also, like I was saying, with the DC editorial, sometimes will allow a character in one book to kind of stray a certain way because of the storyline they're in. Whereas in other books where the character appears, you, you don't really see anything of that until maybe a year later when suddenly they reference, oh, yeah, and that happened to you because each book is focusing a lot of times on such a narrow window of time that you just assume at some point between these other stories, this thing took place, but you don't always see that interaction going on at the same time in all those books. So it's possible that there could be, you know, something a little darker that happens here that you won't see reflected, you know, especially in his own book um, and, you know, any other places he might appear for a while just because of the way editorial will kind of keep hands off until things get out of control and then they have to kind of rein it back in. All righty. Um, cool. So before we push into to rapid fire, because I think we are probably need to be rapidly getting there, mm -hmm. um, West Coast Avengers number two would probably be the last one for that and then rapid fire and unless anybody else got something. Uh, so... Um, we have a new Modoc, so to speak. If you've already seen the headlines, uh, spoiler alert, Brodoc is a thing, uh, which is who oddly looks like um, Adam Warlock, like a, a surfer version of Adam Warlock. But but the team already knows this is like clearly this is Modoc and this and other, other, so they're trying to keep him busy to find out what his game is. Um, which you know, the, the two Hawkeyes goes and investigates while the other teams, the, the other parts of the team are sitting and watching Weekend at Bernie's, both of them, but they watch them in reverse order, which was kind of funny. And then you have this big argument with with uh, with uh, Quentin Quire and Gwenpool, which ends up with them two kissing because that was tension that was already kind of built up and escalated real quickly. Uh, but outside of that, the, the book still kind of continues to be fun. They don't really... They kind of talk about the giant tiger um, a little bit, and but that doesn't come back into play until the end of the, the end of the issue when Brodock thinking. I think it, it looks like the team made the villain they thought he was because they because he found out that uh, they were been snooping around his his thing, and then he calls out the giant tiger and a couple and a few other people that are, that we don't haven't seen prior to now. And um, that's going to play out next issue. So it's it's still been a fun read book uh, book to read so far. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this uh, arc ends up. To whether I, I stay with them or not, because we'll love me some wackos, you know. But mm -hmm. the makeup of this team is, is mostly good. I just just just, just a, a couple of people. But that's it. So are we good for rapid fires? Has anybody else got anything to, to kick out? All right, spin them up. Spin it up. And All right, let it roll. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do mine. Uh, Star Wars Lando Double Announcer number five. This is the end of the, the uh, miniseries. It basically gets you to the place he ends up being right before uh, solo a uh, star wars movie in a nutshell um see teen titans number 22 so after the events of last issue we thought um we thought one of the titans had been dealt with uh which apparently at the end of the book turned out not being the case uh kid flash is still kind of heard about it but 
uh, Red Arrow's like, look, we need to train because to keep this stuff kind of stuff from happening again. They do. She pretty much takes down the rest of the team with the exception of Robin, who's off on his own doing this other doing this other thing. Uh, and kind of like, look, y'all can't rely on your powers. You know, you've seen this in, in Arrow and other places and and, 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 and others, so you kind of know what that's about. Um, we found out that Robin is, which I don't know if this is 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 playing out in his book also, but apparently he and Red Hood are working together on what's going on also because Red Hood shows up in the book, but no one else knows about that. He also interrogates people in his jail and the rest of the team doesn't know about that to get the information that he gives to Red Hood. And then at the end of the issue, uh, Kid Flash finds out that uh, Roundhouse, the, the, the team member that we, that we had thought died, is apparently still alive and chilling in his house. Okay. So... Uh, Injustice versus Messes of the Universe number three. Dirk, are you reading this? Or are you waiting for it? I have actually, I, I grabbed them, but I haven't read them yet. Gotcha. Yeah, this is probably something you might want to make sure. The only thing is, is if you're not really up on the Injustice uh, Universe, the, there's a couple of things that might kind of, that they, they bring up that might kind of throw you out there. But outside of that, like this is basically uh, both sides are saying, hey, we need to go ahead and finish these people off tonight. And, you know, due to Adam getting um, some stuff, they try to go on their part where when Superman is supposedly indisposed, but it might have been either a ruse or just a weird timing. And there's a big, a couple of big fights happen because on the other side, uh, where on Eternity, in, in Eternia, Darkseid is attacking Crescent Gray Skull. Um... And at the end of this issue, uh, a confrontation that you've been waiting for happens, although it might be over before it started. Let's see. Um, John Wick number three. I know um, Agent uh, 70 said he was going to read this, so I won't spoil it. But there's really not much to spoil it because it's John Wick. He's going around killing people. Mm. Um, well, let me rephrase that. He's killing people, then gets pro propositioned, and then people are after him again. In, in a nutshell, there's some, there's a one two things that happen in between that, but you can read that for yourself. Um, and then I think the last one I have is Spy. Little nope, nope, not that one. Star Wars number fifty four. Um, and as I say in my notes, uh, Han tries out an X wing, Leia tries out Leia tries out a Tie fighter, and they end up meeting in almost a disastrous way, but it doesn't go that way. Uh, another day, another set of codes that need to get back to the rebellion, and there's also callbacks to Rogue One and a, a recent uh, Darth Vader issue. And that is my books. Okay. Uh, let's see. I've only got a few. We actually covered a lot of what I read this week. Um, just uh, to wrap, uh, X-Men Gold, number 36. This is the final issue of this particular run of X-Men. Mark Guggenheim does a classic one-and-done story that actually doesn't have an ending, ends on a minor cliffhanger. Uh, essentially, a new uh, mutant appears, and several things are still unresolved in the X-World, but ultimately we will be running straight into uncanny at uh uh you know with the culmination of the events in the story wait is uh, it cannonball who comes back i'm sorry is that a new mutant is it cannonball no. no 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 when i say new mutant i mean like literally a new mutant appears on the cerebro screen so yes. anyway i understand <laughs> uh amazing spider-man annual number one this so was it boom boom no it wasn't was boom. it boom boom the new mutant <laughs> Trying to rapid fire here, fellas. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number One. This uh, is written by Saladin Ahmed, and uh, this was a pretty uh, interesting story. But we've se we've sort of seen this before in the Spectacular Spider-Man cartoon, where it's a untold tale of Spider-Man uh, in the wake of coming back to Earth after Secret War after the the first secret war with the alien symbiote costume so we find out what has what you know what happens and we kind of uh read the story and hear the story through the point of view of the symbiote that's what's different in this so uh it's still it's still read like something that we might have seen before uh thor number five this is i know there's lots of people who uh 
are on again, off again with uh, with, with Thor, especially with the art being uh, Mike Del Mundo. It's not always uh, the clearest thing, but this week uh, Christian Ward is doing a guest appearance, and uh, he did a killer job on uh, was it Odyssey, the the uh, the Fraction book, the Image book, and he also uh, did a spot on Black Bolt, and uh, this is. Uh, King Thor versus Phoenix Wolverine. I am not spoiling a damn thing. It is a lot of fun. There's flashback uh, scenes in this, and it's just it just reads like a great Marvel comic. It's just a lot of uh, uh, high powered uh, combat in the mighty Marvel manner. So that wraps up my uh, rapid fire because we covered all the books I read earlier. Was it Wolf Spain? Was Wolf Spain the new mutant? Okay, oh. all right. <laughs> Nude alert! All right. Uh, I only got two other books here. Uh, talk about Venom number six. Um, this is wrapping up the arc of the Venom God. We find out. We found out in earlier issues that the symbiotes are all kind of interlinked uh, mentally to this one all-powerful one. Uh, it's just. You know, the one here on Earth has been gone for so long. He's been disconnected from the hive mind. And now that he's reconnected, the big bad guy wants to come back and uh, reabsorb him. And so that sets up for what basically happens in this issue, which is the confrontation where Eddie Brock doesn't want to lose his symbiote. And uh, this Grendel monster thing wants to come uh, and get him. So Donny oh, Cates... Is, wolf reference. Look at that. So, so Donny Cates has set this up over you know, the five issues leading up to this where he meets a lot of other characters. He finds out a lot of other stuff uh, about the symbiotes that he didn't know. Um, and so it all leads up to this big battle, this confrontation. He's learned he can do some new things. Uh, he's got some new tricks. Um, and of course, there's some stuff that we know about the symbiotes that apparently this thing doesn't because of what has happened here on Earth that has not been uploaded to the hive mind. Um, and so this plays out in the giant battle. The only problem is, though, at the very end, uh, when it comes down to the the final, like, we're going to wipe this guy out, um, Eddie Brock actually doesn't have the power of the symbiote, and he's got to hold a door shut uh, in order to, to keep the thing in there so he will be destroyed. And somehow this guy from Earth is powerful enough to hold back the demon Grendel goth vampire symbiote god from outer space. Um, so that's, like... Eh, you know, the one little nitpick I have there with the story. But otherwise, really good, and it ends in kind of a dark place where uh, it really sets a big question mark for what's going to follow. Um, and then Nightwing 49, I actually picked up Nightwing, the last issue in this issue, because Silencer appears, and I've been enjoying the Silencer uh, series, so I wanted to see how this ties in. And Nightwing... <laughs> I'll try to condense this as much as I can. He's had a bunch of his friends kidnapped by this villain called the Dark Web, who's trying to gain access to this They're great social security numbers. No, well, he's, no, it's this. Uh, <laughs> there's like this Celtic god who has the ability to tap into all the knowledge of the universe, and so they give Nightwing this virus thing so that he can, like, put it at the altar of where this. Celtic God with all this information is and they can hack into his system and steal all his information, which, okay, whatever. Um, that sounds pretty ludicrous to make it even more ludicrous. The way you gain an audience with this God on this Island um, is you win a motorcycle race. And so <laughs> it's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty far out there as far as the story goes, but to make it even better, and this is going to be why it's my click of the week. In this motorcycle race, where Silencer and Nightwing, first they, fa they face off and then realize that it's a misunderstanding. They're on the same team, and they're fighting, and they're, they're knocking everybody off, and they're jumping on motorcycle to motorcycle to get through this race. And in the middle of it, we get a Tron bike. There's, there's a guy on, on a light cycle right there in the middle of the race, and Nightwing jumps on and knocks him off and takes the Tron light cycle for himself and rides it on his path towards victory. And I, 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 like, this is what I live for. Like, this is the type of Easter egg that makes my heart flutter. Uh, <laughs> so for this, uh, this reason alone, 
Nightwing is my click of the week. Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. I I I remember hearing about it because I they think they likened it to Cannonball Run. Uh, uh. Yeah, it is. It's a it's one of those like madcap. Uh, you know, a, a Professor Pig is there, and so he's got like this uh, three wheeler uh, okay, motorcycle, so and he's throwing his little little girl robots at people, and they have, of course, have butcher knives in their hands trying to attack people in the middle of the race, and it's like, kind of like Death Race and Cannonball Run. I was about to say it's wacky races, basically, or Mario Kart at that point. <laughs> but yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's fun. It's silly. It does. It's you know not trying to be incredibly serious and it's it's running with a an awkward premise and it knows it and so it just cranks it up to 11 and it makes a tron reference and so therefore it wins okay <laughs> all right so um i guess we're gonna go into clicks of the week huh yep so dirt just said his um, which is Nightwing 49, number 49. And we also have Tim's, which is Thor number five. Nice. I like that too. That was definitely a candidate. Indeed, indeed. Um, and this was a nicely packed. Do you have yours already? I do. Surprisingly, oh. it's not Thor number five because even though I liked it a lot, I got to go with Avengers number eight because my favorite line of the week is in this issue as i said earlier dave marquez's art is a welcome addition to the story dirt really should read it and i'm going to slightly spoil one line it's about breakfast that thor says and it <laughs> made me laugh oh, yeah. out loud so hard when i read it the other day um i gotta give aaron a lot of credit for making you know like it's it, it's it, it's one of the better timed and and I give credit to the letterer um, who placed the bubbles in that sequence. I'm assuming that maybe on layouts, you know, VC's Cord Pettit may have had uh, an assist from Aaron on this, but the way it's laid out is so well done. Hmm. So Avengers number eight is my click of the week. That's a, that's a pretty good pick. Um, I think I've been te was teetering between that one and um, Carl Lovitz, but I'm and well, Mr. Miracle, and this was a good week, man. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. But Mr. Miracle was a good candidate too. Yeah, but it's the baby tray. Um, but I'm thinking, well, I'm, I'm rethinking it now. No, um, I'm going to go ahead and go with my initial pick, and that would be Doctor Strange number five. Because I, I enjoyed that book immensely, amongst the others this week, but that one also. So we are done with the week. And it is way past my bedtime. <laughs> All right, Dirt. Thank right, you, easy, man. Thanks for having me, guys. I'll see you next week. See you next week. Later. Later. All right. So New first ad read of the night. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's for Wink, the personalized wine club. I'll go quickly. Wink is a world of wine delivered right to your door. From Rosé to Cabernet to Torrente, Wink has over 100 styles of wine to discover. Ever try an orange wine? Wink connects you to a world of exclusive wines tailored to your taste and delivered directly to your door. Wink delivers four bottles of wine to you every month with free shipping. You can pick your own bottles or let Wink choose and match to your taste. It doesn't cost a thing to become a member, and you can skip or cancel anytime. And now, the listeners of the Click Nation's Comic Book Chronicles can enjoy an exclusive discount of $20 off your first order. To place your first order with $20 off and to help keep our show free for you, go to our network website at cspn.us us forward slash wink that's cspn.us forward slash wink wink wines through cspn do it today real quick before we move on to the news i was listening to an espn podcast of all things where the host um whose name escapes me now she, it's a female host she has a co-host on the podcast she does a late night show on espn plus now but as a as a as a as a gag they decided to do ad reads in different voices so the first voices they chose were michael mcdonald and uh, <laughs> and bane so I, I i i want to tweet back at these hosts 
and and tell them that I also read the ad reads for the most part on our podcast, and I'd be interested to hear what what voices I should try just to give it a little bit of a tweak. And you know, how about this? If you feel so 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 inclined next week, or even later on tonight, or later on, you know what? Just knock in the one if you got it, and we'll let the we'll let the audience decide. <laughs> I, I want to get that Michael McDonald one because I can I can hear the Bane one already. But uh, and <laughs> you have to send me a link to that um to that to that uh, podcast. Sure. But um, news coming news. And as we tend to do about this time, we start off with this cinematic news and what is going on with my screen. Um. Okay, you know what? You're acting up here, but that's fine. Titans, first look at Jason Todd in Robin costume. So yeah, um, this weirdly looks like um, what's that um, Ben Stiller movie? I don't know what um, Mystery Men, maybe. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, this kind of reminds me of that for some stupid reason. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, if you're watching the video, you can see a picture of uh, Robin and Jason Todd looking. Slightly similar, except for the height. So, yeah. Next up. Next up, uh, DC Universe's Titans assemble in new team photo. Speaking of this uh, new team photo and uh, sneak peek, I know that they're going to be doing a premiere over the weekend of New York Comic Con. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's down further down the uh, the list, but I saw that hit my uh, my. Uh, I email inbox today as new york comic-con fast approaches uh probably not but since you mentioned it yeah it literally just dropped i think to uh, you know at some point today it hit my inbox i think yeah and i was about to say, I cut this one i might have mentioned it at the last one which by the way um i did a uh there was an all new show from last week's news i did as, as you uh i mean episode uh 181.5 if you're so inclined go check that out but uh, that i did a couple of days prior to this um to this recording so you can go check it out and hear my thoughts on the news. Well, you hear the news and on DC Universe, which I went over also, by the way. I did a little overview on that. So I know if you've had if you've had time to mess with it. Mm -hmm. uh, no? No, not yet. I have uh, not. Cool. Well, moving right along. Um, actress Breck Basinger, no relation to Kim, I'm pretty certain of that, uh, is the hero of DC Universe's Star Girl. So it just came off the wire today because um, we know they were doing a Star Girl show, and we now have our said Star Girl. There you go. Okay, next up, uh, DC moved to new Warner Brothers division with a new president in charge. Yes, uh, Pam Lifford is the new president of, uh, well, excuse me, has been promoted to President Warner Brothers Global Brands and Experiences with responsibility for Warner Brothers consumer products, DC themed uh, entertainment and a new global franchise team. It, uh, so congratulations to her. Uh, Henry Cavill, by the, so I talked about, this is one of the things I talked about during said news uh, show uh, a few days ago. In that uh, Henry Cavill may or may not be walking away from the, the Superman, and upon, according to one report on CBR, uh, it is a fake, or actually CBR through TMZ, which mm. you can take that from for whatever. So yeah, if you don't know about Alan Coruscant, it's, 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 you know there was uh, something saying that Cavill might leave the, the role of Superman because of some breakdown in uh, negotiations. Uh, between him and DC or Warner Brothers uh, because and there was something wrong about it had something to do with a, a uh, cameo in Shazam that didn't quite work out because of scheduling issues which that seems doesn't seem like that would be the case uh, Cavill's manager came out and said hey he still got the cape in his closet whatever that means and uh, I think later that day or that night Henry Cavill himself was it went on Instagram and did some Instagram, uh, cryptic Instagram uh, video post with a um, Krypton shirt. So, or with a 
Krypton wrestling shirt, whatever, regardless of this. And now this is going on saying that it might be fake, which I was under the pressure. I was like, you know what? Even if it was a thing, it could have been a money play, which we don't know if Cavill's like that or not, or even the, the people behind him. It's a thing. Regardless, stay tuned to see what happens with that. Okay, next up, uh, new set photo is a reveal of first look at Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. So new set photos provide the first look at his take on the Joker in the upcoming film. Looking like Jim Carrey a little bit. That's weird. Um, anyway, Harry Potter's Emma Watson dons Wonder Woman costume in new photo. So if you're watching the video, you can see uh, Emma Watson and someone dressed as a Yoda for what looks to be, which I guess was a Halloween costume or something. I don't know what's going on. Well, anyway, it was for some reason. It doesn't matter, but it was, that was on our Instagram page. There you go. Um, okay, next up. Uh, Arrowverse finds its lowest lane in Grimstar. I thought we covered this. Uh, no. Okay. I think we were. they were looking for lowest lane at the time, and they finally have her. Okay. So, yeah, we got that now. Um, Avengers Affinity War ends domestic run with... An auto playing video, sorry. Um, Avengers Affinity War ends domestic run with fourth highest total in box office history, which puts it behind um, Black Panther, I, I want to say. Uh, and that that's domestic, probably, right? That is domestic, yes. Yeah. I think it is actually probably still going strong internationally, but yeah, we are domestic towards so mm -hmm. that kind of place. Um, you know, so some other movies, it's also, hey, it made a lot of money. <laughs> Go figure. All right. Captain Marvel's first trailer dropped this week, and it's filled with 90s nostalgia. Did you uh, watch it? Yeah, a couple times. It's pretty fun. Same here. Yeah. And with that, matter of fact, you can go ahead and uh, to take the next one also, because it's related. Avengers 4 directors tease fans to look hard at a new photo. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. That's not related. I thought I put the other one in there, but I didn't. I didn't. My fault. So, yeah, there was a bunch of Easter eggs in, uh, in Captain Marvel and uh, some hubbub around it, but we're not going to talk about that because that was stupid. But, yeah. Avengers 4 directors teased fans to look hard at the new picture. But, so, we were people were thinking that this had something to do with the actual movie, and maybe it does, but there was nothing in this photo, if you're watching the video, that just seemingly has anything to do with the movie, actually. Um, of course... Uh, fans looked at the picture, like I said, and found out there are four A's hidden about in the picture, which actually I thought that part was well done. But um, nothing specific to the actual movie. So just the directors having some issues or having, excuse me, not issues, having fun. Uh, next up, Spider-Man Far From Home set photos reveal Peter and Michelle in Prague. Uh, which you see from the video uh, off of this tweet, you can see um, Tom Holland and, and Zendaya. Which that doesn't seem like it on set, but just just like some whatever pictures that came off the tweet. So. Okay, there is a report out that Loki, Scarlet Witch, and other Marvel heroes are going to get their own live action, I believe. Yes, television series on Disney's streaming service. That's what it's looking for. There has been no confirmation from Marvel or Disney about none of this. And a lot, and some places are re rightfully reporting uh, this as a report, and some people are kind of just putting it out as, as a thing, mm -hmm. which that's kind of a problem. Um, but again, we haven't heard it from Marvel or Disney, but um, I guess we'll stay tuned to see if that's actually good. And actually, I don't, not that I think about it, I don't know if it actually does say anything. I think the Scarlet Witch one said it was live action. But I don't know if uh, the Loki one was. From the next uh, thing, we know they are getting into live action stuff because uh, Young Avengers, Young Avengers creator to create Marvel female superhero series for ABC. Interesting. Yes. Interesting that it's it's for ABC and not for the Disney streaming service. Exactly. That was the other thing that was kind of interesting about this, and the fact that uh, hey, Agent Carter could have been brought back on the air. You know, but no, we're going to leave that alone. So, yeah, Alan Heinberg is developing a TV series based on, quote unquote, lesser known female Marvel superheroes, which, well, no, because it has nothing to do with that um, 
like the squirrel girl thing or whatever. I was, like, I was thinking, I was like, wait, was that it? And they're just like making it a team because I think that's that's New Warriors, though. Yeah. So, but according to the, the the Hollywood trade reports, that the hour long drama has been picked up for production for production commitment by ABC. So we will find out what that is going to be. The, this article is speculating um, a force, which sure. I mean, some version of A-Force because a lot of those characters are on other shows. Exactly. So that'll be... Everyone from everyone from uh, Nico Minoru to Medusa to... Well, the Medusa thing's not, no longer right. there. Um, yeah. Yeah, unless... Uh, yeah, I don't know. And Gifted's out there. And, she's, and um, I don't know if Dazzler's showing up on that show or not, but whatever. So yeah, we'll stay tuned and see what, how, what happens from that. And also, speaking of Disney streaming service, uh, speaking um, the middle, Disney streaming plans will likely kill Marvel's Agents of Shield, which you know the show's been going on for like what five years. It might be a little long in the tooth at this yeah. point. Like, well, I mean, five years, uh, five years is a good run for any show. That's all I'm saying. I'm looking at you, Supernatural, and Simpsons. Um, so if that ends up being the case, you know, it's had a good run. But yeah, they're basically saying here that because of the other stuff like that, um, well, yeah, because of the other previous one with the Loki and uh, Scarlet Witch thing, they may possibly get rid of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You know, so, okay. If it happens, it happens. I mean, like I said, the show's been good and it's run its course, or run a course. Mm -hmm. um, go for it. Marvel's Kevin Feige is confirmed to oversee Disney's X-Men films. Which, so it, it, this dropped from up on high, Disney CEO Bob Iger. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that bodes well. Rehire James Gunn, Bob Iger. Well, yeah. sure. <laughs> I, that, I think that's probably a, a pass uh, at this point, but yeah. Still throw it out there. Yeah. Oh, he's listening. We're influential <laughs> like that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, Star Trek Discovery. Rain Wilson teases the return of Harry Mudd, which is a spoiler if you haven't been watching Discovery. He's, you know, Harry Mudd's played part, which I already knew that, but whatever. So, yeah, he's going to be back for season two. I have not watched any of that show yet, but I really, really want to, and I plan to soon. Um, so now we are going into the comic book news. You can go ahead and take this first one. All righty. So, uh, perfect. DC's freedom fighters make their triumphant Nazi punching return. So, uh, this is the Earth X Dream Team, the freedom fighters. They're making their return in the rebirth era with a brand new 12 issue limited series by Robert Venditti and artist Eddie Barrows, set to hit shelves this winter. Which I'm kind of curious is the weather that uh, CWC um, the ratio had anything to do with that, which I, so I, I kind of doubt it. But hey, Nazis punching Earth X. Well, and the last uh, Arrowverse crossover, I would maybe so. But punching Nazis, that's pretty much the order of the day. Uh, midnight release planned for Nightwing centric Batman for Survive and Batman. So, yeah, this is kind of old news at this point because all of these issues are out. Well, I think well, I don't know about that, but um, no, I'm sorry, Harlequin Fifty. I don't think it's out yet. But regardless, Batman Fifty Five came out. And apparently, I guess they had something. Uh, and Batman uh, Bat uh, Damned is out this week either. So apparently, there are other DC titles. Oh wait, no, all of them for this week. So all of these titles, yeah, came out this week. And I guess they had some midnight thing, which I had not heard anything about because my shop didn't have anything. But moving right along. Uh, Wade and Ramos's Impulse Omnibus was canceled, but may return in a different format. So DC Comics is on, has canceled plans for the Impulse run by Wade and Ramos to be printed in an Omnibus hardcover, but there are plans to reprint the material in another format. Or put it on DC Universe. Right. That's a thing. I would assume. Anyway. Um... So I talked about this in the last show, but I got the name wrong. I thought it was Benjamin per person, and it was not. Steve Orlando renews DC exclusives, and actually, I'm going to take the next one with it because this, this is actually related, sort of. Okay. Um, I think it is. Wait, I keep saying that, and yet I don't. 
Yeah, it, the the one after it is related, not this one. I meant to move that. So yeah, D, uh, Steve Orlando renews his DC exclusive contract, and along with that, um, there's going to be a new Martian Manhunter book uh, written by Steve Orlando and uh, with art by Riley Rossmo, and that's going to be launching in December. So and I don't think it's a uh, no. Yes, yeah, so it is a twelve-issue series, and it is a re-examination of the character's origins and emotional journey, and also a detective story on Earth because he did have John Jones' his, his secret identity. Um, so yeah, if you're a Martian Manhunter fan, and maybe there's going to be some part procedural in this, which actually might sound cool if that's the case, go check it out. Okay, so you did Swamp Thing and Secrets Truth in new comic book. Line. No, I didn't. I did not do that one. You do. You can oh, go. secrets, truth, and new comic book language will be uncovered in Martian Manhunter. Oh no, no, that one I did. I didn't. Ah, do this you one. skipped the Swamp Thing. I, that's why I wasn't. I was trying to figure. I got a little lost. Swamp okay. Thing story central to the Witching Hour, Justice League Dark, and Wonder Woman crossover. So Swamp Thing is retire, announcing his retirement in the last issue of Justice League Dark. So what comes next for uh, Swamp Thing? So we'll see what happens. And uh, it's going to pop up in the crossover, the Witching Hour, which starts in October. Uh, yeah, apparently, yeah, Swamp Swamp thing is kind of a is going to be a big part of that Witching Hour thing. May or may not have anything to do with that show coming out on DC Universe. We don't know that. That is me speculating. Um, but yeah, I think that should be starting soonish. That Witching Hour thing. So I don't know. Uh, Cryptozoic and uh, Warner Brothers Consumer Products announced the release of Supergirl Trading Card Secrets uh, Season 1. So, yeah, Supergirl's getting some uh, trading cards, and it's going to be the um, the Arrowverse version with uh, Melissa Benoit. Benoist. Um, there's going to be a 7-2-card base set with several chase sets, uh, randomly in inserted autograph, wardrobe, and prop cards, and redemption, art, uh, redemption cards. That can be redeemed for actual props used on the show. Uh, each hobby box contains one autograph card and one wardrobe card. So this is not a trading card game. This is just just um, trading. This is just I mean, this is gonna be. This is not a old school trading game. cards. Yeah. This is just old cool school trading cards. So cool. All right. So next up, Candace Patton calls Flash Funko Pop line a missed opportunity. So the actress who plays uh, Iris, Iris, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, comments that um, the initial wave, uh, which was released a few years ago, contained. Uh, characters but did not contain an iris west well so basically so so there, there, so there was a new line of funkos with uh the, based off of the flash tv series with, and it had all the dudes well most of the dudes actually in, including you know uh various flash cisco in his suit uh wally and um um uh jay garrick what she did not know at the time was apparently Funko was going to release, and she basically said that it was a missed opportunity because there's some, you know, for missed opportunity for some kick ass uh, female characters for a show to get a pop line, is basically what she was saying. And she listed off a name of the characters who could use one. What she did not know at the time was that Funko apparently was going to release at least, or at least one and maybe more uh, next week. And Funko came out and said, oh, we were going to surprise you next week, but why wait? Killer Frost is our first uh, NYCC exclusive retail. Um, and yes, she is a Sarah exclusive, which means that it won't be just an uh, NYCC exclusive. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if there's now, I don't know if there are any of the other ladies on the show that's going to get a Funko line, but apparently that's the, the only one they mentioned. And uh, I don't know, we'll see next week uh, if they end up doing any more. But there is something out of that that did happen, and I think they said, yeah. Um, in a follow-up tweet, the company, being Funko, said, we hear your demands for, for more female CW The Flash pops, and we will pass it along, we promise. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Funko, speaking of. Next up, this is supposedly a uh, New York Comic Con exclusive. And yeah, I really, really want this one. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if I'm able to get my hands on one. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Funko has produced an Okoye uh, Funko Pop figure based on the scene in Black Panther where uh, Okoye and T'Challa infiltrate this uh, Korean underground club and uh, Okoye is wearing a wig and the yeah. wig is detachable. Yes, it is the wig in, the Funko, in the Funko Pop figure. Yeah. The wig snatching scene that people have a gift and and did all the, all the fun stuff with, we're getting a Koya character uh, Funko with the with the detachable wig and it's gonna be a, it's you know, insert jokes there. It's a nice it's a nice uh, it's a nice yeah. figure to uh, to add to the collection. Mm-hmm. Um, and speaking of big news that we uh, found out about uh, a couple of days ago. Killmonger miniseries coming to Marvel in DC, and this happens to be written by a uh, previous guest of the show, Brian. Immediately previous oh, guest. <laughs> to which he did not uh, mention anything to us about this, but he didn't anything, not a clue, not a drop maybe, of a... We just missed it, I don't know, but regardless, uh, so yeah, Killmonger is going to get his own miniseries starting in December, I believe it's, what is it, five or six issues, can't remember what it says. Um, called Killmonger, and the art is going to be by Juan Ferreira. Ferreira, Ferreira, excuse me, sorry. Um, and this is just an article with uh Brandon Rahill. So that's awesome. And it looks like it's going to be set. I think I saw a tweet on this. It's going to be set after um, uh, Evan Narcissus's uh, Rise of the Black Panther, if for what he said, in the, or for what he answered in a tweet to someone. Okay. So that sounds awesome, you know. And there's the, actually he's if you check out his Twitter, he's been saying a couple of things. Cause people have been asking about it, so he's been um, fielding questions, or at least what they could about it, can about it. Mm-hmm. So, cool beans. All right. So, in not so great Marvel news, yeah, I mean, Marvel pay- editorial canceled the new Vision series before it even came out, which was written by Chelsea Kane. Yeah, and matter of fact, before even pre- it was uh, available for pre-order, from from what I'm not mistaken, and although it like, had been right, it had been advertised but not solicited, right? So, and she had she well, excuse me, they the creative team had already had uh, four issues in the can, and apparently, b- b- based on the next article, it came to a surprise to her that that happened. Yep. So, and and you know, she's been out there on Twitter, you know, kind of. Talking about a little bit of this and that other, just basically saying that uh, Marvel kind of wanted her to kind of play it nice and neat, but you know, <laughs> which she, she said uh, amusingly, it was like, "Have you met me?" Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, she's been kind of given a little bit of the dirt behind it, you know, within reason. So that's sad because I was really looking forward to this book, and you know, I think you and I both, uh, Agent Seventy, were were fans of her Mockingbird book. Yes, it was well done, and it did not deserve any of the crap that stupid people gave it. Exactly, and also died fairly early, even though it did get to eight, but it, it you know, wasn't given that much of a chance, so it's kind of sad. I know. Right. Now, it's worth noting she is doing other books, so she's she's uh, she's, she's still you know, doing some things. I, I would imagine this would sour her relations with Marvel. But we don't know. You'd think. But, yeah, which that would make sense. I wouldn't blame her if, if it did, so... Um, but next up, Thing and Alicia Masters to Marry and Fantastic Four's 650th issue. So if you've been paying attention to, uh, wait, yeah, Fantastic Four number one, mm-hmm. spoiler alert for a, what, a few weeks old book. Yeah, we already had number two. Yeah, yeah, well, number two's already came out, so, you know, sorry about that, not sorry. But he uh, Ben popped the question to Alicia at the end of uh, Fantasy Four Number One, and uh, yep, they're going to get married finally after 50, 50, 60 years, whatever much it's been. Well, remember there was a detour to her and Johnny at one point, so there was, but it was and, a scroll. Yeah, which actually, yeah, which I I almost put this out on Twitter. I was like, yeah, if she ends up being a scroll again, I'm gonna be really upset. Mm. Um, but I didn't say it. So yeah, apparently, and here's the. If you're watching the video, you can see the um, the uh, invitation. So hopefully it'll go off without a hitch because sometimes comic book marriages don't. Okay. Uh, next up, Marvel unveils Venom symbiote of war. 
So not hundred percent sure where this is going. Hey, oh! So yeah, this is for actually. Uh, wait, Venom Six was uh, yeah. See, Dirk will talk about this earlier, but he didn't mention this because it came out in the book test that's this week. So I yeah, I don't know, and I kind of actually don't care. But if you're watching the video, you can see the picture of uh, Venom and his kid is our glory. I guess. Okay. Sure. Uh, Uncanny X Men Disassembled debuts a new team of mutant horsemen. Um, so yeah, this is symbol is coming up, and and it looks like instead of the you know, X Men facing off against Apocalypse's four horsemen, it will be the four horsemen of salvation, which sounds weirdly like what they did with Galactus for a while, which should have stuck. But yeah, <laughs> oh, it's it's worth noting by the way, uh, some of the stuff is coming from the December solicits, which are out for various places, including Marvel and DC. Okay. All right. We don't know who the mutants are, but yeah, they're that, that's the thing that's going to happen. Next, uh, Marvel's Ages of Star Wars details are going to come at New York Comic Con, which is in a few weeks. Yep, October 5th is going to be the panel at one o'clock p.m. So if you're there at New York Comic Con and care to check out what that is going to be about. Which uh, says here it's going to be a 24 part maxi series which spans all three film trilogies of the Star Wars universe. Goodness gracious. Yeah, no, that's going to be a big thing. And you can see the, uh, looks like uh, the covers um, um, of the books, or some of the books anyway. Mm -hmm. so, cool. Um, we've already kind of already talked about this, but Doctor Strange gets an impressive Ice Guardian power upgrade and a new car, uh, costume, kind of. Uh, mentioned this earlier so we can move on after that right, so this story i actually read this book and forgot to write it down hmm. um i didn't I, I actually want to go track down a physical copy because i have the first two issues this is number three hmm. so this week's issue of the life of captain marvel revealed a pretty big retcon to her origin and um you know and it's more likely done to streamline the character's origin in the interest of creating something that's understandable for oh, fans who may want to uh you know who, who who may want to do some back research when it comes to the movie i kind of hate that but yeah they're, so they, they're basically trying to put it in line with the upcoming movie which i kind of get mm -hmm. i still kind of hate it but then again but at, as this article pointed it out it's not like this is the first time Carol's origins has been kind of rewritten a little bit, so yeah. it's, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, this character's had a lot done to her, and I've yeah. seen that in the, in, in the strictest sense of the way I said it. Mm -hmm. And it's actually, I think, a good thing for Marvel to kind of streamline some of the things that has happened to this character and streamline the character's origin. Yeah, those of us of a certain vintage to know, know everything that went on with her, so it, it'll it's not like it's going into where it's, well, it it's, is it's there right exactly we're not talking uh uh pre-crisis <laughs> we're not talking pre-new 52 we're not talking about pre-rebirth it's but, just there we so, may not talk about it all that's all basically so that's the thing it's the thing uh right i talked about some well i talked about similar mo news uh in the last episode with the all news in the episode but spider-man's ps4 hey guess what that is a game that's still out there and it's still awesome and I'm going to take both of these two, uh, these these next two. Uh, well, excuse me, this one and the next one. Because Spider-Man PS4 Guide, all secret photo ops locations. Yes, this is just me basically wanting to throw some more, uh, talk about that Spider-Man game a little bit more because it's great. Um, and yeah, and there are secret photo locations that you could basically stumble across if, if you're paying attention. Uh, and I will go ahead. I won't tell you what they are because obviously it's in the article. And if you are far enough in or you want to find them for yourself, you can do that. But all I will say is that, you know what? If it looks like something that could be an Easter egg, it is probably one of these photo ops. Uh, and I also will give you a photo op. I, I will give you one an example. Uh, Uncle Ben's grave. Mm. Yeah. And that was another one I was going to mention, but I can't remember what it is. But regardless, you get the idea. And like I said, if it looks like it could be an Easter egg or something, Take a picture of it. It's probably one of the secret photo ops. Uh, and the next uh, thing looks like 
the Spider-Man comics are going to use a great idea from the new video game, and that would be um, J. Jonah Jameson apparently is going to be a shock jock, which, I mean, kind of he already is. So right. I guess J- Jameson is going to get his own podcast. Now, the thing is about in the game, um, that version of Jonah is kind of the 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 sense of a truck shock job and and actually he's kind of plays more like as much as I hate to say it but this is not the first I'm not would not be the first person to make this um to make this correlation kind of sounds like Alex Jones really but but going up against Spider Man yeah so because yeah and during the course of the during the course of the game you hear uh like snippets from pod from podcasts and he kind of sounds like in that case in, in a couple of cases in a couple of times. Wonderful. Okay. But yeah, so that is the thing. And I guess um, in this case, he's going to have, uh, yeah. And of course you've seen the video, you can see there's a video with a link to one of the, um, one of the um, podcasts and it's called just for facts. And I don't know if they're doing that part. And I don't think they're going to go with that angle in the comic book. Cause obviously at this point we know uh, J- JJJ is kind of pro Spidey because of knowing who he is. So, this article of speculation is he going to be pro, pro Spider Man or what? But regardless, I guess that's going to be a thing that's going to happen in the books, which is the what second or third thing that's probably come out of that game that's going to end up in the books. Hmm. So there you go. And last up, go for it. Matthew K. Manning and John Samarova take on Marvel Action Avengers from IDW Publishing. So IDW Publishing has announced that it's. Uh, uh, publishing an all-new Marvel Action Avengers comic book series for younger readers based on Marvel's uh, most popular superhero team. Uh, it's going to be helmed by the writer, Matthew K. Manning, and artist John Samariva, and they're introducing a dynamic roster to battle a mega-sized threat. So when this hit on Twitter, I, w- I will note that this just kind of confused a few people, and almost including me, because I thought about it for a minute. I was like, well, they are doing Star Wars Adventures, and I was like, well, could it could have been something like that. We did not know it at the time until this came out that indeed it is an, an all ages book, and they're doing the, the publishing on it. Because people were like, wait, wait, what's going on here? Because they're thinking, oh, that's Avengers, so why isn't Marvel doing this? You know, which, you know, it's worth noting that IDW does publish other things like this for other from other uh, licenses. And that is it uh, for the news. We have one more ad to go through, unless you got something else you want to bring up. No, I've got this last ad, and I'm trying to decide what voice to do this in. Um, (laughs) It's kind of funny. Um, I hadn't really given too much thought to it. It just sort of crossed my mind um, as we were doing the show. Um, I I don't really have a great uh, impression, so I think I'm going to hold off and work on this for another week. So uh, last, but, 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 but in the interest of doing it quickly, I'm not going to do my uh, Christopher Walken. So Funko, fun at first sight. You're home for exclusive collectibles, such as their world-famous pop vinyl bobbleheads, apparel, T-shirt, hats, and socks, and brand merchandise, custom DIY pop figures, art books, and skateboards. And now, the listeners of the Click Nation's Comic Book Chronicles can enjoy 10% off your entire purchase when shopping at Funko. To place your first order with 10% off, and to help keep our show free for you, go to our network website at cspn.us, that's cspn.us, then click on the Keep Our Podcast free link at the top of the page. From there, scroll down to the Funko link and place your order. When you get to the checkout, put in the offer code SHOP10 for your 10% off discount. Funko through cspn.us. Do it today. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I can't believe I can't find my uh, my uh, my sound effect. Where did it go? Where did it go? Don't know what sound effect you're looking for. Where did it go? My, my uh, cash register. Where did it go? How's that? Thank you. I was about to say I think it I think it got moved by accident. Um mm. uh, in the uh the efforts to uh streamline <laughs> got it. Well on that 
case, we're going to end the show for the night, and we will be back with you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Hopefully, a little bit earlier if we get the gremlin ironed out. Damn you, impossible man! Um, again, you can find me. I'm Radicat at uh, Radicat on Twitter. You can also find me at uh, well Radicat on Instagram. You can also find me at uh, CB Caps, which on Instagram where I tweet out stuff and I put some stuff up today. You should go check it out. I found it. Nice. Uh, piece of the blah, blah, blah. Agent underscore 70 on Twitter and Instagram. PC and underscore dirt uh, on Twitter. And I don't know if he's on Instagram, but he probably is. But he probably wouldn't want you to do that. Uh, popculturenetwork.com. Popculturenet on Twitter also. And I need comics.com. Uh, Tim, D O G G 98 on Twitter. Uh, uh, CB Cron and the Click Nation on cr- Twitter. That is the K L I Q N A T I O N. And of course, the Click Nation.com. And also go check out his works over on Comic Book Resources CBR. Go, go give him some clicks and some love because he writes some great stuff there. It sounds like we've got a got a fairly full plate given the news that some of which we've gone over um, <laughs> uh, tonight. Uh, you can find this peer program on the CSPN network, that's CSPN.us. You can also find us on Google Play and the Apple iTunes and the um, the CSPN SoundCloud. You can also go check us out there on, on that channel. And last but not least, shop.cspn.us, where you can get some merch from this program and other programs on the CSPN. Go, go there, get some nice swag. With our, I'm blazing with our logo. So. And with that, folks, um, again, we will see you here next week about this time. Wait. Uh, no, we'll be prepping for New York Comic Con next week. Okay, so yeah, so it'll be the week before NYCC next week, and I'm sure there will be some news coming out of, or coming before that, which I'm sure will come out uh, next week. In in addition to more stuff from solicitations, so stay tuned to that, and uh, we will see you then. This has been the Click Nation's Comic Book Chronicles, and we are gone. Peace. <laughs> You believe it's, it's Dr. Doom? What's on your evil mind? Oh, you